On January the 22nd, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, the Nuclear Ban Treaty, enters into force. What is this treaty about and why is it so relevant? Hi, I'm Carlos Umaña from IPPNW, the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War, and from ICANN, the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons. In July of 2017, 122 countries, a clear majority in the international community, voted in favor of adopting, within the UN, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, the Nuclear Ban Treaty, or the TPNW, which is one of the largest and most important milestones in the fight for nuclear disarmament. In October of last year, the TPNW reached 50 state parties, and this activated its entry into force 90 days later, on January the 22nd of 2021, the date in which it becomes international law. To understand why this is significant, let's first tackle the nuclear problem. Humanity currently faces two existential threats, climate change and nuclear weapons. The nine nuclear weapons nations together have 13,500 nuclear warheads, of which around 1,800 are in a state of high alert, that is, pointing at cities and ready to be detonated within minutes. We know that nuclear weapons have dire effects on the environment and for people in the short, mid, and long term, and even over generations, and that a large-scale nuclear war would cause an enormous environmental devastation and a global climate change of apocalyptic proportions, capable of driving many species into extinction, including our own. Recovery from a nuclear war would be impossible. The only solution is to prevent it. We also know that the risk of a nuclear war occurring is very high. Many experts agree that the current risk is higher than ever. At large, due to the instability of the current leaders of nuclear countries, to the climate crisis itself and its capacity to bring about armed conflicts, and to the possibility of accidental detonations. More than 1,000 accidents have been documented with the U.S. nuclear arsenal alone. And publicly, we know of seven occasions in which the world has been at the verge of a full-scale nuclear war. The increasing reliance on automated systems makes high alert systems vulnerable to cyber terrorism and to human and technical error. After all, nuclear weapons are machines. And as we know from our daily experience, machines eventually fail. The risk is such that several experts have argued that the most likely nuclear war will be an accidental one. Another part of the nuclear problem, quite significantly, is nuclear investment. The yearly investment in the maintenance and modernization of the world's nuclear arsenal has been estimated to be as high as $116 billion. And this investment continues even in these times in which a large part of the world's population is struggling to find resources to face the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, it is clear that we have in our hands a problem that requires an urgent solution, and that historically, it hasn't been possible to solve it. So what changes with this treaty? If it doesn't currently have the support of any nuclear weapon state, how could it work? Well, first of all, the TPNW is a triumph of international diplomacy. It is a result of the collective empowerment of non-nuclear weapon states and of them assuming an active role in nuclear disarmament, challenging the world's largest economic and military powers. This initiative stems from the understanding that the nuclear problem is global, that its consequences are global, and therefore its solution is collective, and all countries are stakeholders, whether they have nuclear weapons or not. In this refreshing new way of conducting politics that was coined as the democratization of nuclear disarmament promotes cooperation 
and strengthens the multilateral regime, essential ingredients to face humanity's pressing challenges, such as the climate change. Now, the TPNW works by stigmatizing nuclear weapons through their prohibition, a strategy that history has proven to be effective, and the process whereby all other weapons of mass destruction, that is, chemical, biological, landmines, and cluster munitions, have been abolished. Today, it would be unthinkable for a country to boast of being a chemical weapons power or of using biological weapons in their security doctrines. This is because there is a strong international norm and a global climate of moral condemnation that have made such policies taboo. All right, so is this yet another treaty? How is this treaty different from the other nuclear treaties that seemingly come and go? Now, it is natural to be skeptic when talking about nuclear treaties, when in recent years we have seen leaders take down treaties and with them decades of hard diplomatic work. The big difference is that a bilateral treaty, that is, one between two parties, can be brought down by one of the parties, and its integrity is essentially compromised with each change of administration, whereas a multilateral treaty produces a normative change that is strengthened with each new country that ratifies it. And this normative change becomes an international behavior that ultimately is followed even by countries that have not signed the treaty and are not officially obliged to comply with it. Now, there are several examples that illustrate this. For instance, there is a case of the United States and its relationship with the landmines and cluster munitions. The United States never signed the treaties that prohibit these weapons, and yet it still stopped producing them. Why? Because with the global moral climate of moral condemnation that the prohibition generated around these weapons, producing countries were left without buyers, they were left without investors, and producing them had become politically unfavorable. And that is precisely how this treaty is already starting to take effect. More and more financial institutions are divesting from nuclear weapons companies. More and more countries, and within the countries, more and more cities and municipalities, support the prohibition of nuclear weapons. Nowadays, power and prestige are less associated with destructive power, impositions, and, and threats, and more associated with the ability to build bridges and create opportunities for cooperation. The TPNW, the Ban Treaty, is part of this change, and that is why many of us are celebrating a century into force. A nuclear war is not a natural catastrophe. It is something that we can prevent. It is something that we must prevent, and together we can do it. Let's help stigmatize nuclear weapons and rid ourselves of this threat to life on Earth. Let us help the world become aware of this risk and help all countries support the ban. And let's all do this by keeping the conversation alive, active and relevant. Let's spread the information and let's be part of the change. Thank you. Follow us on social networks and share information using the hashtag nuclear band.